The running orders for semifinal one and semifinal two of Eurovision 2021 are out. It is time for us to go back and forth and give you our take. Oliver, are you ready? <laughs> Let's, Let's do this. Do this. All right, let's quickly just recap the running order for semi-final one. In the first half, we have Lithuania, Slovenia, Russia, Sweden, Australia, North Macedonia, Ireland, and Cyprus. And in the second half, we've got Norway, Croatia, Belgium, Israel, Romania, Azerbaijan, Ukraine, and closing the show is Malta. And we should point out that Belarus was initially in the first half of this running order. People were asking, why is Cyprus suddenly in the first half? The reason is because one country has been disqualified, and so the first half technically finishes with Ireland and Cyprus's Yelena Sagrinu. Her and El Diablo will be opening up the second half. All right, Oliver, let's kick this off by looking at the first half of semifinal one, Lithuania, the Roop Discotheque. I think this is a brilliant opener. The song is mainstream. It will no doubt be eye-catching and eye-popping, as we saw at the national selection. I think it's a really good way to draw viewers in. I don't think this is an insult to Lithuania at all. I think it's an honor to be chosen to open up the entire Eurovision Song Contest 2021. Yeah, I completely agree. I think even though there's a lot of pressure to go first, it is absolutely one of the best spots to be in because you set the bar for everybody else. And given how energetic the song is, I think Eurovision really needed to come back with a bang this year. It was the obvious choice to go first for me. Either that or something more up-tempo like Australia, I would have been happy with. But yeah, Lithuania, absolutely, they're going to do well from the first spot, regardless of whatever bad luck people think tends to come with it. Um, so yeah, good spot for the route. Candy Muse recently opened up the roast on RuPaul's Drag Race USA, and she ended up winning the roast, I'm just saying. Oliver, moving on, spot number two, often considered the spot of death, it is Slovenia, what do you think? I think Slovenia would have been a really, really tough qualification this year anyway. Honestly, this kind of feels like the nail in the coffin. I think she could just pip that 10th place or possibly 11th place spot if the juries respond to her vocals because we know that Anna Soklic can sing absolutely got an incredible voice she's so sta excuse me she's so statuesque and you know vocally we know she's going to kill it but I'm really worried that this is going to get lost after Lithuania because like I said, so much energy coming from discotheque and you've immediately got this ballad and immediately people are going to compare this gospel kind of religious undertones of this ballad to this really up-tempo disco song that is the vibe of what everybody wants. I don't think the odds are in Slovenia's favor here. Yeah, I think at the end of a show, to remember an act from early on, you really do need to have an act that stands out. And you'll remember the Roop, but will you remember what came after the Roop? I'm not so convinced. I think with the jurors, it doesn't really matter as much. I think jurors are much more honed in on vocals, you know, talent, the song. So she could get some jury love, but in terms of televote, that's going to be what really hurts her, I think. In any case, we move on to number three, Russia Manesia. She actually messaged us on Instagram after we posted the running order, and she said number three is her good luck charm. So that is very interesting. Um, I remain convinced that she could do well in the televote because this is original and quirky and different, and she's a great charismatic performer. With the jury vote, Russia sometimes gets it from the jury. You know, some. You have your own theory, but this is a fact if you look in the past, sometimes it struggles with juries. So I'm not sure what that means. However, I do tend to think that she can get through personally just because she is so charismatic. And I think people will love how out there this is, especially after the all white holiness of Slovenia will then get this kind of theory out there, unique performance from Russia. Yeah, agreed. I do think it's a bit of a tough spot as well number three this this whole first half half i think is quite difficult 
But Manisa was number three, actually, in the Russian selection. So if that's anything to go by, she's going to do pretty well. Uh, Jury-wise, yeah, not quite sure how they're going to respond to it. But Televo, I can see a lot of people getting on board with this based purely on the spectacle of the kind of the merging of the traditional garb and then the more modern elements of this song. It's going to be one that will stick in people's heads. Whether it's going to be up there in terms of the scoreboard, I'm not sure, but qualification, I've got my fingers crossed for Russia. And for Manisha, she is such an icon. Everything she's been through and how she keeps pushing through, love her. Definitely. Now, so this video is not 22 hours long. We look at four, five, six, and seven. The rest of the first half, we have Sweden, Tusa, Australia, Montaigne, North Macedonia, Vasile, and Ireland, Leslie Roy. I guess one thing that sticks out to me is that Leslie Roy has been chosen to close the first half. This is very, very interesting. You know, if you believe the adage, producers want to keep you watching so they push their favorites toward the end, then Leslie must have something very good up her sleeve. She is, of course, working with Mon Love's stage director, which has already given us so much hope. And that's on top of the initial hope we had because of the quality of this song. I think producers believe in her, and I hope Leslie believes in herself. Oliver. I agree. When I first saw The Running Order, that was the name that I was most excited about because, like, I'm such a big fan of Leslie. I think Maps is so elevated, such a great song. And in terms of Running Order, just looking at it historically, song seven to nine, somewhere there, that tends to be where the ad break is. So it's that build up, like you said, to the end of the first half that is really going to go off with a bang and make people come back after the ad break or interviews or whatever it is in your country that makes people want to return because they've just seen a spectacle. I think this definitely puts Ireland's chances of qualifications up there. I was a little bit worried at first, but yeah, this is qualifying no doubt from this position. It's really interesting, this section, four, five, six, seven, the variety of genres. Sweden sort of polished, I don't want to say predictable, but polished radio pop. And then Montaigne just kind of taking us all over the place, people's minds will be blown. To Vasil, musical theater realness, Disney on show, Disney on ice, and then Ireland, folksy singer, songwriter. Sweden can qualify from wherever. We know this. I mean, they've been all over the place and they've made it. They've won from all over the place. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that they weren't put at the end of either, the end of the section. To me, that suggests maybe, well, I'm not going to read into this too much because it's great for variety. Um, but it does, it just adds fuel to my fire that Sweden wasn't put last and that Ireland was. Yeah, I think Sweden is a tough one because the song itself is generally, generally quite inoffensive. It wasn't massive one of my favorites in Melody Festivalen, but that's beside the point. I just think that there's a lot of other songs that will pull people's attention in a little bit more. I think Sweden are going to be safe no matter what. This is going to do well with the juries based purely on radio potential and streaming figures or whatever it may be. Tusa is going to go through. I'm just interested to see if they're going to change the staging from Melody Festival. And because I think sometimes that's maybe where Sweden slips up because they do often copy and paste a lot. And people might want to see something different with it being one of the most watched Eurovision pre-selections. A lot of people will know what's coming with Sweden. Well, with Australia, we are all in the dark because you never know what you're going to get with Montaigne. We've only seen a performance at a cricket halftime show, or sorry, pre-show, so there's not much to go on. I'm just hoping this is more Kate miller Heidke, wow, awe-inspiring, over the top, than kind of Isaiah, man singing on table that spins in front of his own photo. And I think Australia, you know, based on their success last time, they know they need to be bold, and I think they will be. Yeah, they will. I'm not a huge fan of Technicolor as a song, but as a performance, I know that it's going to be great. I think Montaigne has a really interesting, captivating artistic quality about her, and that will pull a lot of people in. My only worry is that when Australia has done well with juries, they've not done as well in the televote. 
and think into that what you will but I do worry that Australia's record could be broken this year you know they're one of the only two countries still that have a perfect qualification record and I think that might be in danger if purely in this running order alone they are kind of in the middle of it and it might be where people get up for a toilet break we don't know I'm a little bit worried for Montaigne but I, I, like I say, I've got my fingers crossed for everyone. I don't want anyone to be eliminated. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Amity, Miss Congeniality. Your crown <laughs> can be picked up after the show. All right, Vazil. I think that no matter where he was put, he was going to stand out because this, as long as he's not near, you know, Anna from Slovenia, um, the other big ballad here. I, yeah, it actually benefits him to come after Technicolor because it's such a tonal shift. So people who are really not into Technicolor will probably be more into Vazil if, you know what I'm saying, it's a bit safer. Um, I think it's always a struggle for North Macedonia, but I think at least with this placement, he's towards the end of the first half. So this, yeah, it's a positive step for him, I think. Yeah, definitely. It could have very easily have been lost, but the running order has been really beneficial to North Macedonia. Whether or not qualification is in sight, we can't predict that just yet. But he's definitely got a stronger chance uh, amongst the competition here, purely based on originality. The song itself, it's a type of thing that we've heard before, but in this lineup, it definitely stands out. And that will ultimately be of benefit to the country. And his vocal is so different from Montaigne and Leslie as well. I mean, he is going for those big old notes, that kind of nuclear, you know, emotion. Whereas both of them, Ireland, it's much much more paired back emotion. It's very, you know, evocative and wonderful and all that, but it's just a different type of expression. So I like the contrast there. In any case, we cannot warble for too long. We move on to the second half. And this is sort of a religious section. First, we have Cyprus's El Diablo, followed by Norway's Fallen Angel. So this is the moment where people who take offense to, you know, ambiguous religious imagery may want to leave the room. Um, I'm kind of surprised that Cyprus is opening the second half. Uh, I think that Marvin Dietmann is just such a visionary, and I think that the video they produce looks so expensive that they have big plans. So I would have expected this to be much later. However, maybe this is after an ad break. Maybe they wanted to make sure the second half gets off to a bang. This is very pop friendly. This is very radio friendly, very mainstream. I think Elena can slay from any position. I really do. I think Cyprus in recent years has upped their game. So I'm not worried about qualification, actually. Um, it just makes me wonder what the staging is like. Because Leslie, will, if she's doing a Mons number, she may have like a screen or a projection or something. So they just got to roll that out and they got to roll on in everything from Yelena. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Cyprus is actually one of the ones we've seen some images of the stage rehearsal from the live on tape recording. Whether or not that's going to be exactly the same as the show in Rotterdam, we don't know, but we can make some educated guesses, right? And, you know, this fiery Fuego-esque staging, it's going to go down well. But at the end of the day, somebody had to open the first half. And there are so many big pop bangers in the second half. We've got Destiny, we've got uh, Eden from Israel. We've got even Norway is a really poppy song if you think about it. And yeah, maybe maybe it's a lot of pressure to open that second half again. But I I don't think this is a cause for concern for Cyprus at all. They're sailing through. Absolutely. This makes me think that either Cyprus or Norway doesn't have fire because you wouldn't put two fury acts one after the other. Um, so I wonder who it will be. We move on to Norway, Tick's Fallen Angel. They, of course, did their live on tape immediately after NRKMGP. However, in interviews I've had with Eurovision singers in recent days, many of them have said, oh, my live on tape is completely different to my live performance. So we can't assume that his planned stage show for Rotterdam will be like his live on tape, AKA MGP 2021. In any case, yeah, he's in at nine. This second half is just so stacked. It, I almost think running order doesn't matter. It's just, it's so stacked and so quality. I like his ballady feel. It is a total tonal shift from Elena, actually, because she has that sort of soaring, I want to say uplifting chorus, whereas his song is a bit more, not downcast, but like, oh, he's in pain, he's in agony, like this, you know what I mean? The self-hatred, all of those feelings that the song conjures. He's going to stand out regardless because he's got, you know, a bunch of people with 12-foot wingspans. So <laughs> he could have sung, you know, last, first, 
in the pre-show, doesn't matter. You're going to remember him. Tix is going to stand out for sure. I think actually looking more generally and broadly at this running order, the tonal shift does really help. And we know that that's kind of the way that they intend to do it. So we've not got genres, we've not got the same genre over and over and over again. But this is probably the best running order they could have done for mixing that up. There is such variety here. And I honestly, it's so hard to predict who's going to get lost in the mix. It's a nightmare. I'm getting wrinkles just thinking about it. <laughs> we move on to Croatia Albina, and I think she's in a very good position because we go from a ball in Norway before her, after her, the slow beat of, you know, Hoover Phonic, and here she is with this, I don't want to call it a banger, but this dance number, this tick tock da 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 So it's a good position for her to be in. Um, yeah, this is just, again, this whole running order, as you've just said, changes, changes, changes. So Albina, she's not near another dance song. Amen, hallelujah. Yeah, best possible thing that could have been with Croatia, again, with Cyprus. Like, at this point, it's just a case of, it's just a case of playing Jenga, you know, putting the pieces together where they fit. And I think that's a really good spot for Croatia. Qualification, I'm not sure of, given the quality of some of the other pop songs, but it's going to be a good position. Yes. Belgium is next in 11, followed by Israel in 12 and Romania in 13. So we're going slow, upbeat, then back to ballad. Um, this whole section, I, Israel stands out for me here because I think Belgium will have a very thoughtful, perhaps intimate performance. You could see them doing some common linnets like intimacy, focusing on Heike's beautiful face, her intensity. But then Eden's going to show up and bam. I have a feeling she's going to go for that dance banger performance, you know, the Imri Ziv type, full on, based on her music video, because that was all about the dance performance, her popping, locking, dropping, and it'll be such a huge tonal shift from Belgium. And then you've got Romania coming after that, which I almost, not nouveau, but performance dance, like performance art, if we go by the music video. It was very high concept, kind of telling a story. Um, but in this section, Israel is the one that will pop out, I think, based on what surrounds it. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Israel is definitely going to be up there in terms of stage production. We saw at the National Selection Show last year with Fekir Labi and all of those other songs, they were all staged really well and obviously were going to be elevated for Eurovision itself. I am very worried about Romania here just because it is such a dip in energy compared to the things that come before it. I'd say of all of the, I don't want to say ballad, but of all of these slow, kind of more emotional, moving, whatever kind of songs, this is the one that kind of gets a little bit lost in the mix, purely because of the two massive up-tempo, huge staging potential songs that precede it and what's the word for it? and follows it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean the final three songs here are all really upbeat high impact in your face azerbaijan Fendi, ukraine go a malta destiny tonally they're all very different i think azerbaijan is giving us those near orient near orient sounds near eastern sounds and then ukraine is doing ukrainian folk with edm and then you know destiny's throwing out some french language electro swing with flashes of Beyonce. There's a lot going on in this final section. So viewers will either be fatigued and exhausted by the end of it, or maybe they'll just be in complete awe at the power of Affinity, Katarina from Go A and Destiny. I mean, Destiny going last, this makes sense. This is the favorite. This is the one people are waiting for. This is also perhaps one of the songs you could see going global, actually. It, it, it has a sensibility of being, it's not just a multi-song, it's not just a European song, it, it has this global quality. Whereas perhaps Azerbaijan and Ukraine, while they're regional, they're still amazing. They're, they're still fabulous, and I'm not trying to in any way put them down. I just think this builds up to the end where they're putting Destiny on a pedestal. It, it does definitely seems like Malta has a card up their sleeve that producers know about and they want to build up to. Um, I think all three of these final three could qualify. Yeah, I think I think qualification is definitely on the cards for Azerbaijan, Ukraine, and definitely Malta. Like, there's no way that that's not going to qualify. I do think it's a really smart move to put Destiny, Destiny last, 
purely, if, if anything, purely because anybody who had to follow Destiny Chukanyeri vocally, like, I don't, want, I don't want to do that. Nobody is going to want to be in that position where they have to live up to Malta's performance because we know that she's going to kill it, even if it is just vocally, even if the stage show is a little bit more subdued, it's going to be hard to follow. So it's a smart choice by producers to put Destiny last. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. Having had this discussion on the semi-final one running order of Eurovision 2021, I am just stoked. I don't know who's going to qualify. This is a bloodbath. This is really hard. Devin and I filmed our semi-final one reaction video yesterday, and I wish we could have waited till today, because based on this, I think some of my feelings have changed. Um, Devin was suggesting that Slovenia had a chance to go through borderline, but I think this running order doesn't you know, feed into that. I feel more confident now about Lithuania and Ireland based on where they're at. Producers clearly believe in both of them, one opening the show and one closing the first half. And finally, my other big takeaway, or two takeaways, Israel is gonna stand out and it's all leading up to destiny, Malta, Valeda is calling. Any takeaways from you, Oliver? Really similar, actually. I think my biggest one is that it seems like Slovenia's fate is sealed as staying in the semis, unfortunately. My other one is Romania. That's the biggest one I'm worried for. I know a lot of people really enjoy it, but I just don't know if it's going to stand out amongst the big hitters of the second half. In any case, it's a really strong semi-final. Yeah. And this actually this actually got a lot of flack amongst fans for being the weaker of the semi-finals, which I don't understand at all. I think this is probably the harder one to call, even if it is just on running order alone. It's going to be an amazing show regardless of who qualifies and i'm super excited to finally get back to your vision i may have on my call center headset but i am not making any calls because this this is a lot going on and let's just be clear we've talked for what 20 30 minutes everything can change with the live performance nothing is impossible anna from slovenia may show up with some epic staging the audience is wowed by that and the song. The jury's wowed for it. Watch her win the semifinal. Look, you just never know until you see the live show. That's what we've learned over the years, all of us. So we wish them all luck. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Do you think this running order helps or hurts specific acts? Have your predicted 10 qualifiers changed after watching the running order or rather looking at the running order? Let us know here on WeWe Blogs. And be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow us on socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is. Name it, we're on it. And also, if you just keep watching the video, there will be a card directing you to the semi-final two running order. Um, depending on when you're watching this, it will be up. <laughs> In any case, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.